Did you know that Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm has a podcast and that we go live every week with a lineup of shows on BND TV? Head over to our YouTube channel today and subscribe for the latest in real estate, entertainment, education, and information. Here's what you missed last week. question is so powerful coach mike and if you wouldn't mind elaborating for our audience could you just highlight for them from a how valuable these down payment assistance programs can be in a real world dollar and cents standpoint because there are some members of our audience who may be in the market to buy their first home who may have even been pre-qualified for a lender who for whatever reason down payment assistance programs haven't been presented to them they haven't been educated could you just share a little bit about what they may be missing out on coach mike if they if those who el are eligible don't take advantage of the programs that are out there uh, absolutely rick and and keep in mind these down payment assistance programs are for people who plan on purchasing a home and living in that house right? absolutely and living in that house you know at least three to five years this isn't for somebody that's just trying to buy for one year and then sell because because you know many of these down payment assistance programs they have that requirement to where you know if you don't stay in it a certain amount of time then it becomes a lien on the house that has to be paid off you know once you sell it so you know this is really for somebody that that's trying that's wanting to lay down roots uh and they want to do that with the purchase of this home but as far as what people are missing out on rick I mean, I think it's really what's stopping many people from even being able to purchase just period, mm -hmm. right? They're, you know, they're stuck renting, they're stuck in apartments, they're stuck renting houses. And it's because not because they don't qualify for the loan, right? It's they just don't have the liquid funds that's required. You know, long gone, close, long right? gone are the days of a person being able to buy a house with no money down, right? Um, well, let me say that without tapping into down payment assistance right so you know no you don't need to put 20 percent down right you can go fha or they have a lot of affordable products that are conventional uh that don't require that you know they require three to five percent down but hey on you know median home right now in houston is north of three hundred thousand. look five percent on a three hundred thousand dollar house that's 15 grand right people mm -hmm. you know there ain't many people out here that's just walking around and that's not even including closing costs so uh, it can get it can get very pricey as it relates to how much upfront money you need because of where the home prices are right now. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's imperative that people understand that the down payment assistance is available so as to not create, you know, to as to not eliminate the option of home ownership, right? Mm -hmm. So people are like, it's not that I can't get approved for the loan. It's just the houses are so expensive, the, the upfront cash requirement is so much that I, there's no choice but to rent, right? So I think mm -hmm. that's where that down payment comes in and, and can bridge that gap. No, that's a great point, Coach Mike, because I'm sure there are so many members of our audience that would have closed on their new home six months ago if they could have did it for $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 right. like in the past. But to your point now, those same homes have the value has appreciated and those same homes are now requiring a 15 17 18 thousand dollar down payment right but like you mentioned everyone relax because there are programs in place where there is down payment assistance available for you so that these funds don't have to come out of your savings don't have to come out of your pocket so reach out educate yourselves reach out to me on Instagram, reach out to Coach Mike, and we can definitely get you set up, man. Thank yeah, you so much for that, Coach Mike, because that's great information. No, you know, Rick, you know, everybody's getting caught up on the interest rates, right? Interest mm -hmm. is so high, interest rates, things like that. But people tend to forget, Rick, you know, when you file your taxes at the end of the year, there's a couple of write-offs that you have. You know, one of them is interest, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them is property taxes. So, 
you know, whatever that interest rate is, you're going to get that back at the end of the year with your taxes. Yeah. So, you know, that that's there as well. So um, being able to position yourself to purchase a home, you know, that that's always going to be a financial win for you as a as a just a consumer, as a citizen. Uh, and we say it all the time, man, it's your duty to own a piece of land, own a piece of the country that you're a citizen of. Mm -hmm. And the tax code agrees with us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the cool thing, Coach. Mike. All right, well, let's let's pivot a little bit. Like I said, we do uh, do a little bit of coaching as well. And, okay. um, you know, with SEO Coach Mike, that's me. And um, so I heard you mention that, you know, you like reading and, and you're not reading as much as you would want to be able to read. And yes. So I'm, I'm very curious to see, you know, you're saying that you don't have time to do it. What's getting in the way of you being able to read, Jackie? Uh, uh, all of those businesses. And okay. then recently I, I'm helping my daughter with the grandkids. And by the time I get them fed and bathed and I'm, I sit down, I turn the TV on and literally I fall asleep watching TV. Yeah. But again, reading is so important. I want to just take out, if nothing else, an hour or two a day just to read for myself because that keeps you. your mind fresh and yeah. learning is very important. You have to continue to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. And OK, so for you, you will be happy if you were able to do, you said one or two. So two hours of reading every day. That's very important. Even I mean, even if I get an hour in, I'm happy. Two hours. Oh, I'm really happy. OK, so an hour. So an hour of yeah. reading, dedicated, intentional reading mm -hmm. would be will make you happy. What about yeah. 30 minutes a day? Huh? I said, what if you did 30 minutes a day? It's a start. It's I mean, I just need to sit down, shut my mind off and read. Yeah. But if you were consistently doing 30 minutes a day, would you be happy? I would be happy. Yes, I would. All right. So 30 minutes will make you happy. Yes. All right. What about at least I know I'm reading and learning. That's true. That's true. Well, what about 15 minutes a day? Mike, can we just do if I'm going to sit down, 15 minutes is not going to keep me focused. 30 will. Will 15 minutes make you happy, though? If you were doing 15, if you were doing 15 minutes of reading every day, okay, would you be happy? I would be happy. What are we gonna read? <laughs> All right, so okay, so here's my here's the million dollar question then. You may can't find two hours a day, but can you find 15 minutes? Of course I can find 15 minutes. Okay. Even if I'm sitting in the parking lot waiting on someone to come meet me, I can find 15 minutes by getting there early to an appointment. Okay. All right. All right. So it sounds like we've made this thing a little doable. It's, okay. it's doable, right? Okay. So, you know, thinking about, you know, tomorrow, let's think about tomorrow. Okay. Right. So you didn't thought through your whole day, right? Where do you see yourself capturing that 15 minutes? Like you're looking like it's tomorrow and you're looking back on yesterday. What was it that you did to where you captured that 15 minutes to where you were at? I would have to capture that 15 minutes tomorrow at the beginning of the day while I'm sitting there having my cup of coffee. I need to be reading. Okay. And you have um, coffee every day? I have coffee every day. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we just saw the problem then, didn't we? Okay. Now, it's what would stop you? What would stop you from tomorrow when you got your cup of coffee getting a book? What would stop you from doing it? Absolutely nothing. Had never well, thought about it, Mike. Well, hey, look, what would happen? What would happen if you did not do it? Uh, I'll just probably pick up and start running all, like I do every day. And had, okay. and before I know it, it's the end of the day and I haven't even read a single thing. OK. All right. Now, what would not happen if you did not do it? Nothing other than I would just feel bad from once again, not reading something. All right. And what would happen if you did? I'm going to learn something. Okay. And what would not happen if you did it? If I didn't learn anything? No, what would not happen? What would not happen if you did read tomorrow? 
that means I didn't grasp an opportunity to learn something new, right? No, listen, what would not happen if you did read? If I did read, what would not happen? Yeah. Nothing. No, nothing? Nothing. I mean, I'm missing this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and you got me live on the spot and people are going, slap her. She's not getting it. She's not getting what he's saying. She's not getting what he's saying. All right. Well, it's, it sounds like you're going to be, what you, it sounds like what you're going to be doing tomorrow drinking your coffee is what? Reading. All right. That's what my plan is. Which means? But, you know, I don't want to just... I have I have a confession here and then I'm gonna move on with it. I, I used to like to read those love stories. Okay. You know? But now I'm older. I don't want to read the love stories anymore. I want to read something that's gonna help me. Okay. And well, what's stopping you from doing that? Um, finding something for me to grasp and read. Now I do read my Bible, but I'm okay. talking something in addition. Like I get these real estate books all the time, mm -hmm. and my goal is just to pick up one and just to read it. So you have one already. Oh, I have top thousands of them. We get them what every month. So why don't you just okay? So you got what to read tomorrow? Yes, I have a lot of them. Just yeah, pick them up and start reading the home magazines or the realtor magazines that come out because they're teaching us something new, what's going on in real estate every day. So I need to start there. So, so tomorrow, you just gave me a plan. thank you. Come on, hey, that's all you needed was a plan, Jackie. I got it now. Never and thought about it. Thank you. And now you got it. See, that's why they call me as CEO Coach Mike Jackie. That's what I do. Change the coaching opportunity. Hey, I love it. <laughs> and they all piled up on my desk. They didn't talk about it. Absolutely. And the here's the issue. right now. And look, and let me tell you what's going to end up happening, right? Um, you know, we start with that 15 minutes. Like the 15 minutes can easily turn into 20, can easily turn into 30 can easily yeah. turn in an hour once you get started. The hardest part is always start. Right? That's true. You know, I heard a, I heard an analogy. They said, you know, when it comes to working out, you know, what's the first thing you need to do if you want to have a consistent lifestyle of working out? And they said the first thing is you need to put the shoes on. <laughs> like if you focus. Oh, that's, that's another story. But yeah. yes, <laughs> if, if every day you focused on if all you focused on, like, don't think about the workout. Don't think about like for you. Don't think about the two hours of reading today. Okay. Think about every day. I'm gonna put my put the tennis shoes on. That's all I'm on every day. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna put the tennis shoes on. Then you'll be surprised how you do the next step and the next step and how it begins to happen organically. Okay. So, so look for the look for the look for the entry point first, and then once the entry point, once you're consistent with the entry point that thing begins to sometimes take a life on its own and, and you'll look up and now you're achieving what it was you were trying to achieve in the beginning. Okay. All right. Sounds like a plan, actually. Sounds like a plan that you're going to do when? I'm going to do it tomorrow. So what is our real estate topic? What is the real estate topic? <laughs> Y'all get into it. Squ yes. Squatting. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I just don't understand why these laws ain't been changed. Like I get, you understand the, you understand the, uh, the premise around why it was lawful for people to squat. I do not understand the premise, but um, I believe they can get a lot of people hurt. <laughs> well, the original premise for squatting mm -hmm. was there were people that owned land, mm -hmm. but you know, back in the time before you had cars and trains and all that other stuff, it would be difficult for somebody like if they was giving away land, and then the person left and went away right for an extended period of time mm -hmm. well so the county was like hey man that land just sitting there it could be doing something they could be farming they could be growing produce they could be doing something on that land so the law was if the neighbor does something productive with the land instead of it just sitting there mm -hmm. then after a certain amount of time and years the neighbor is entitled to that piece of property for the effort and how they made it productive again right because back then, nine times out of ten, if somebody land and been left vacant for that amount of time, they did. They ain't coming back. They didn't got lost at sea. They ain't they they done, right? Interesting. Well, now in 2022, we don't really need that no more. Boys is not just stealing people's stuff. That's stealth. No, they all stealing people's they all just out here stealing people's That's stealth, stuff. Man. Yeah, I heard they're like 
stealing people's IDs, getting people tricking them to write stuff over. Man, hey, look, you can't just go in nobody's house and just stay there, bro. Like that yeah, ain't your see, house. Yeah, I'm like that will get you hurt. So it's like don't don't go to the police. Hey. You need to call the ambulance. <laughs> Cause them boys is coming. Yeah, like you in my house. Come on, man. I, okay, so you telling me just because I'm not here, you feel like you didn't discover that? Well, I did see something in England where that happened. The people went on vacation, they came back, people were there. They was like, hey, what happened? And they were like, you left the window open, so we're invoking our squatter rights. Shut up. It's like you didn't secure the property, so hey, we're here. And you know what? I'm about to secure my hand on your face. Right. That's what I'm like, man. Okay, y'all, cut the cameras off. <laughs> you don't need no evidence. It's about to go die. Yes. You about to die. Yes. Because you in my house. Didn't just have a video for us. Yes, you got a video. Yeah, um, let the people see it. Some real, these boys is Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the video for you guys. But y'all, Do y'all know the current years uh, or the time frame now for like squatting? I don't think there's well, like a time it's frame. State. It's based on the state. Like the in state Florida, is, yeah, in Florida is seven years. I think in Texas is two years. Mm -hmm. We so I find quit. some land. She find yeah. some land. Two years. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Texas quick to give somebody stuff away. Like, hey, you don't want it no more. But Texas is okay. also quick to give people guns. Yeah, so are. it's like, That's hey. Facts. Y'all go yeah. shoot it out. Yeah, Texas, and whoever hey, come up on top, y'all pay the tax. Hey, Texas, Texas, like, hey, go for it, bro. Like, <laughs> what you what you mean? You need training? It's a gun. Yeah. You got to You got a trigger finger. Pull it. Shoot, shoot, bang, bang. Let's get into this video, man. Y'all check this out. Let's see here. What we got here? All right. Let me. You know I told him I'd charge him fifteen dollars a month. Fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. Eighty six year old Elizabeth Hutchison, a retired federal worker, doesn't know much about rent and says she knew nothing about the thirty something young man who approached her in Safeway to help her home with her groceries last October and moved in with a woman, then a dog. Him and the young lady just stayed up there in the room. And then I noticed he start they started eating my food. Her part time home health care aide who said Hutchison suffers dementia didn't know what to do. I thought the man was her son, and she told me, no, they were strangers. She met him at the Safeway. I became pregnant. Hutchison has no family locally. She says she asked them to leave, but they wouldn't. She complained to neighbors who took the matter to court. But the alleged squatters argued it was a landlord-tenant case. Not so, says the local ANC commissioner. Because they don't have a lease agreement. They don't have any rent receipts. She doesn't want them here. And furthermore, she's afraid. Even so, a judge gave them till Friday to bring proof they were legal tenants. Henderson said she visited the elderly woman last night and the couple were not in. I called a few neighbors just in case the two invaders were to come back and, you know, become belligerent. And we changed the locks. I feel good. First night I got a full night's sleep. You didn't sleep well when they were here? No. I became afraid of them. Now locked out, will the couple show up here Friday with legitimate rental documents? Or as neighbors suggest, is this just a case of people taking advantage of the elder? Terrible, terrible, terrible. Let me tell you something, Jess. Them people going to hell. I'm telling you, man. How are you going to do both? Terrible, That's terrible, both. Terrible. That man... Hey, look, Dad, that man just said, that boy's like, let me help you with your groceries. All right, I'm coming with you. <laughs> okay. Hey, what? And then she said, you're not eating her food. Yeah. How you going to eat grandma food, man? So that's, like I was telling Mike when we were muted, I that put, put my plotting hat on. I'm hey. like, okay, so they eat my food. They're going to be eating a lot of rat poison and rage. <laughs> Mark is going to play that, man. Yes. I'm and telling then, you, man. <laughs> Margaret don't play that, man. You just yeah. you just heard that. You heard that. Mm -hmm. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. When the steam come out. Come on, man. She got me okay, hey, look. Hey, man. Them people going to hell, just. It's terrible. I'm telling you. So.
Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce this week's guest. She is not only an outstanding realtor, she is not only a fitness enthusiast, a real estate rock star with the Braden Real Estate Group. i like to introduce Miss Raven Young. How are you? Hey, good afternoon. I'm good, guys. How are y'all doing? Outstanding. Thank you yes, so indeed. much. Hold on. Let me get that to you. Let me get that to you. Let me get that to you. Give it a clapper. Thank you so much. Um, Larry spoke a little bit about you guys' background with each other, how you guys had a chance to meet, network, and interact. So I like to ask all of our guests, first things first, what is your first memories of interacting and meeting the Texas real estate king, Mr. Larry W. Brooks? <laughs> Who knows? So I, I met Larry at a networking event. I thought it was pretty great because I knew exactly who he was as soon as I walked <laughs> up to his table. Right. Um, the first thing he did was try to give me a book, of course, yeah, yeah. and I bought it. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's what what it. Did. Yeah, That's it's what a great book. It's a great book. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've always uh, admired the show and what you guys are doing. I know some of my fellow co-workers have been on. Um, so I'm excited to finally be here as well. I oh, know, absolutely. Yeah. So just... For those in our audience who are meeting you for the first time, just introduce yourself, your real estate yeah, brand, and tell us a little bit about your personal real estate story. Yes. Um, I'm Raven Young. I'm born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but I've been in uh -huh. Houston quite a while. Not a Houstonian, but uh, definitely my second home. Uh -huh. I'm with the Braden Real Estate Group. I've been with Braden since I started my real estate career. Uh -oh. in 2020. Um, oh. I started my career a month before COVID shut everything down. Wow. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I really? started yeah. literally right before it all just, you know, went down. And I was super excited um, to get started in the industry because I had found a brokerage I thought really spoke to who I was as a person and just mm -hmm. the type of value that I wanted to bring um, throughout my career, my journey. Uh, with Brayden. So I joined Brayden, started training with them, and a week later, COVID shut the whole world down. Wow. So instead of letting that discourage me, I um, became a ment uh, became mentored by Nicole Handy, yeah. uh, the co-owner of Brayden Real Estate Group. And uh, she really, you know, paved the way for me to just learn as much as I could during those down moments of COVID, just, you know, being so... Um, mm -hmm uncertain with the industry and i just really wanted to dive in as soon as everything opened back up especially yeah. being under the wing of you know one of the greatest realtors i've ever met so mm -hmm. you know that's really good because i was wondering i always wondered for people that got their license right around that time period if it was a great opportunity for them to study more or or if they just got frozen was like maybe this is a sign i shouldn't do it so it seems like you took the latter part and was like study more get mentored and be ready yeah exactly i was i i learned canva i learned how to make all my own ads i learned i did photo shoots um i practiced video uh content you know just getting in front of the camera more um she really poured into me just knowing that that was an opportunity to just grow and, and build on the back end before i put myself out there to the world so i use that downtime to definitely learn and grow as a, as a realtor now you mentioned a lot about um, your content creation, your video um, production. Mm -hmm. So as someone who follows you on Instagram and follow you online, I've been really impressed with the content that you created as far as homes that are for sale, listings, spotlighting certain master plans and communities. So for those that follow you, but it may not have the opportunity to meet you in person, how challenging was it for you to get comfortable in front of the camera? And are you as comfortable in front of the camera as it seems from the content you're creating? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so at first I was very shy. I did not feel comfortable at all doing content and just putting myself out there because I didn't know how I would be received. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a big adjustment going from corporate America, going from running a, a business where you don't have to be in the forefront to literally having to be in the forefront almost overnight because mm -hmm. that's the direction that our business has gone uh, mm -hmm. within the last couple of years. So it was an adjustment mentally to just get out of my own head 
with mm -hmm. what are people going to think about me? You know, am I too country? Am I too, you know, too urban? Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know. But mm -hmm. I knew that the more I just was myself, the easier it would get and the right people would adapt and gravitate and, and really get to know me as a person and me as a realtor. You know, Raven, it's it's and one of the things that I when I watch your page, it's always glowing, right? But you know, a lot of times in this industry, we try to be lifestyle realtors. Like we can, we can, we try to show you know our everyday uh, wins and some of our struggles when it comes to like how we deal with our family and stuff like that. I think you do an amazing job at it. Like literally, you take the time to make sure that it's structured where they see that you live a little bit, so that it, but they also respect your hustle when it comes to this industry. So I just want to give you a kudos and your flowers on that right now. You're doing an amazing job at that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. But no other community is going to do it for us, for our community. Nobody's going to do it. So we got to do it. Our black love has to be so strong for our own that we're going to do whatever it is. This week on Black and Real Estate. Man, NARAB, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, still championing democracy and housing to this day. Founded in 1947 in Tampa, Florida. Um, it's an organization that's near and dear to my heart as a black real estate professional for why it was founded, right? It was founded during a time where there wasn't any democracy, there wasn't any fairness when it came to African Americans and blacks in America. You know, we weren't allowed the the certain rights that any citizen of a country should be able, should be allowed, right? We're talking about real estate here in Black and Real Estate because that's our focus. But the reality is, is that there was not democracy as it related to education, as it related to finance, as it related to work. Like there was so many discriminations as it related to voting, just basic rights that any citizen should have, right? And around that time, Booker T. Washington, one of the leaderships of, leaders of our community, was forming these organizations through the National Business League that was there to champion and to be an advocate uh, for the social ills of the country as it related to black people. And during that time, NARAB was founded, founded in Tampa, Florida. And for any real estate professional that's black, you gotta be a part of this organization. You know, to be candid with you, I've been in real estate for nearly 20 years. And I didn't find out about NARAB until close to 10 years in this business. And there's many of you out there that don't know that there's an African-American trade association that was formed to help us get more black people in the homes. A lot of you all don't know about it just like I didn't know about it. But guess what I'm gonna do? From the time that I found out about NARAB on as long as I'm in this business, I'm going to be making people know black professionals, whether you're a broker, whether you're just a, maybe you're a realtor, you're just licensed or, but you're in mortgage, title, insurance, uh, inspector, appraisal, land development, property management. You know, we have black people in all of those portions of real estate and all of those black real estate professionals, we all need to be a part of NARAM because when we have a united front, that's how a lot of the legislation was passed that helped black people. When we talk about the Civil Rights Act of 1968, when we talk about the fair housing uh, laws that were passed federally, fed federal laws being passed with the help of NARAB since 1947. But then you have other local laws in the state of California, in the state of Georgia that were passed because of the united front that was being able to be presented by black professionals to help pass this uh, legislation. That social activism, that spirit of the social activist is what's gonna be needed to get more black people in the home. So, as a black professional in real estate, you need to go to NARAB.com. You need to watch the history of it. You need to uh, look into whatever your local market is. I'm here in Houston. So if you're here in Houston with me, you definitely need to get connected with the Houston Black Real Estate Association so we can get you plugged in. You need to get connected with the State Association. You need to go to a national conference so you can engage with black professionals about the business of getting black people in the homes throughout the United States. You need to take part in it because at the end of the day, 
as black real estate professionals, we have to get committed to continue to grow, right? To continue to get more skilled, get more savvy, get more creative, to help our people get into properties. And we have to continue to commit to contribute. And what does that mean? Willing to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, because no other community is gonna do it for us, for our community, nobody's gonna do it. So we gotta do it. Our black love has to be so strong for our own that we're gonna do whatever it takes in our skill set to get more black people in the home. Start, go to narab.com, learn about the organization so you can get in the fight with us. I promise you, it's gonna be well worth your time, energy, and effort. Let's go, people.